condition. He says in verse 38, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Never was there a more solemn, a more, a more terrible curse pronounced upon a people. This was a curse. But who was it that cursed Israel? Jesus spoke the words. But who cursed Israel? Israel cursed themselves. Christ never cursed them. Was it Christ who was the result of these disasters coming up, coming up on them? It was their own actions that cursed them. All Christ did was express the truth. Somebody might pronounce a curse upon you, but he doesn't curse you. He only expresses the truth of what will happen. If somebody with a prophetic voice under the divine impulse expresses a curse, what he's doing is telling you what is going to happen. He's not bringing it upon you. That's the first thing to recognize about a curse. When a curse comes upon a person, you know, we're, we're familiar with the stories about witches and wizards and how they curse somebody. And they bring a curse upon them. But that's not the biblical concept of a curse. In the Bible, a curse is somebody expressing the consequences of your actions. Not somebody bringing something upon you. Although Jesus might say, I will bring this upon you. You understand what he's saying is that your own actions are, the result, are going to result in this. Let me, show, let me give you another illustration of what I mean. Go to Genesis chapter 9. Here we find something happening. Noah, after the flood, became drunk and lay in his tent naked. And the Bible says that his son, his youngest son, Ham, went in, saw his father's nakedness. The Bible doesn't tell you exactly what he did, but the suggestion is that he mocked his father, saw his father's nakedness, and mocked him, laughed at him. Verse 24 says, And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his youngest son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. So Noah awoke and cursed Ham, didn't he? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Look at the verse again. What did Noah do? No, he didn't either. I'm at verse 25. Okay, I know I'm kind of tricking you a little bit. I'm not tricking you. I'm showing you that you read carelessly. Genesis 9 and verse 25 says, And he said, Cursed be who? Amen. Canaan. Who was it that came and looked at him? Yeah. Ham. Who was Canaan? He was the son of Ham. Ham did something and Noah pronounced a curse upon the son of Ham. Now this would be so unreasonable and unfair if you think that it was Noah who brought the curse upon Canaan. But he didn't. There's a principle in the Bible that I want to outline to you that, that I want us to understand thoroughly. God says that he visits the iniquities of the fathers upon whom? Upon the children. To the second and the third generation of them that hate me. Third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now is it God who arbitrarily decides, Howard, you have done something wrong. I'm going to curse KK. And when KK has children, they are going to be cursed. And when her children have children, they are going to be cursed as well. Is that the way God is? No. So what does, does Noah mean? Pronouncing, we believe, under the inspiration of God's Spirit, pronouncing a curse upon Noah's son. What is the reason for it? What, what do all these verses mean? Simply this, there's a rule of life that is inescapable and it's called the law of consequences. Consequences. God may, may pardon the penalty of a, what a person does, but consequence continues. What you do affects your children. If you, if you happen to go out and, and pick up AIDS, for example, and you say, God forgive me, but you have a child. Or, or you pass it on to your husband. You think because you are forgiven, your husband is not going to get, the, the sickness is going to stop. 
or your child is going to be miraculously no longer having AIDS. The consequences continue. Now what, what, what God saw in Ham was that this boy has something in his character. And that character trait was going to be passed on to his son. So the curse fell upon Canaan, not because God arbitrarily decided to punish Canaan, but because something that God saw in Ham's character, Ham's nature, passed on to his son, it was transmitted to the next generation. In fact, God says it goes on to the third and fourth generation. And how far does it really go? I look at my four parents in Africa because I'm black. And black people, you know, it seems like they have been slaves and, and, and mistreated and they have suffered the worst kind of way on this planet. They have had slaves all through history, but it, nothing seems to have followed any, any nation as, as much as it has followed the black race. I suppose as a black person, I'm more acutely aware of that. But where did it start? It wasn't my fault or my four parents' fault, but we all descended from the generation of Ham, from the line of Ham. Ham took a course contrary to God. He led his children in that course. They went southward into Egypt, into Africa. They took a course. It is said that Nimrod was a part. Nimrod, not it is said. The Bible shows that Nimrod was a part of Ham's lineage. Established a system and a kingdom that was in direct rebellion against God. It went from father to child. And, and, and as the knowledge of God became less and less, they became more degraded. Till they began to worship stones and trees and pieces of wood. Where does it stop? When you are born in a, in a, in a land where people eat people as a, part, as a natural way of life. Where the only God you know is a stone. Where betrayal. Where the, the, the most degrading aspects of human nature are commonplace and are the normal way of life. What hope do you have of ever breaking the cycle? It only gets worse. So the curse is consequence. And that's one thing we need to understand that when God does not, normally speaking, God does not interfere with consequence. He may forgive the penalty, but consequences forgive, uh, continue. And life teaches us that this is the way it is. Now there's something interesting about what God says. Because he says, unto the third and fourth generation of what? <laughs> Them that hate me. Do you hear an element of hope in that statement? In other words, you know, when I was a boy and I used to read stories about curses. In fact, I don't need to tell you about that. Let's look at what the Bible says. Let's look at... Um, Genesis, Genesis again. Let me see, I have to find it here because it's not on my paper, but I'll find it very quickly. Um, Genesis 27. Now in this chapter, Jacob came to his father. And the strange thing is that he came to his father by deception and he stole something that belonged to his brother. By deception and, and, and trickery. Now I know that God overruled because the way Jacob went about it, he should never have gotten a blessing. But you see, a blessing is simply a prophecy of what will happen. So when Isaac blessed Jacob, Isaac didn't put that blessing on him. God worked through that whole situation and made a prophecy concerning Jacob and it was fulfilled. Don't think that it was Isaac why Jacob was blessed. But Isaac was the instrument who was expressed.